of the past, two different things. The exhibit that surrounds you now examines the alchemy that changes the past into stories, histories we would tell about it. The past never changes, but the way we understand it, learn about it, and know about it changes all the time. What was gospel then is often in disrepute now. Yesterday's truth becomes false or ill-informed or offensive today, and vice versa. Long accepted histories about the sophistication of the cultures in the Americas before 1492, the size of the native population, and the role disease played in decimating that population have been turned upside down. And over time, the way others see us has changed as well. We're viewed as saviors of the environment, barbarians and noble savages, the lowest form of humanity, sometimes all at once. Rarely are we seen as human beings. It's a dizzying spectrum of impressions, deeply embedded, fiercely held, hard to dislodge. They've been fixed in all our minds by histories taught in classrooms, generation after generation. Hollywood has offered its own image of us, a powerful one, forged and reinforced by movies seen by countless viewers. George Kaplan's portraits of Native Americans surround you now. These portraits, but also his paintings of daily Native life, are the work of a richly talented artist who brought his Esau West in the early 19th century. Kaplan not only drew, he declared himself an authority on his subjects. In a time of slow communications, his ideas about them were profoundly influential. The camera, even more documentary than Kaplan's paintings, captured the faces, dress, and lives of many Indians. The images it produced fed a hunger to know about these peoples. Museums and their collections, exhibits, and displays have been significant in defining who we are. Most of the objects in this museum are here because George Gustav High had the wealth, the wherewithal, and the desire to gather them. These are persistent streams of information that have shaped impressions of Native people. Repetition over decades has solidified them. And while disparate, most of these sources share this. They were not created by Native Americans. Not the paintings, not the photos, not the movies, not the exhibits and collections, and especially not the histories. Certainly some of these efforts were well-intentioned. It's true that without them, much that is preserved would have disappeared. But there's another truth. The subjects here, us, have been portrayed from the outside. Our stories told by others to explain or justify their own agendas. Or, we've been considered people without a history. The truth is, we care passionately and have fought at great cost to reclaim knowledge of the past. We are left then with this paradox. For all our visibility, we have been rendered invisible and silent. A history-loving people stripped of their own history. This museum rests on the foundation of consultation, collaboration, and cooperation with natives. It has shared the power museums usually keep. The place you stand in is the end product of that sharing, a process of giving voice.